recently mr mundaval arun kumar stirred up a hornet's nest when he commented the state government has not properly represented its case before the supreme court in a case filed by him with reference to bifurcation of andhra pradesh state his main contention is that advocate who came on that day took a view that this is a settled thing and state government is not interested in breaking up this case but he wanted the state to really represent the injustice done to the state as part of the bifurcation and file a proper affidavit before the supreme court responding to this the advisor to the chief minister of andhra pradesh mr sajila ramkrishna reddy went a step further and told no 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 we are interested in a united andhra pradesh and that was our stand right from the beginning and we will be accordingly presenting our views before the supreme court in fact nobody can attribute any motives or suspect the sincerity of undaval arun kumar in this regard because he has been singularly fighting since he genuinely believes that a lot of injustice is done to the andhra pradesh state as part of the bifurcation of the state one of the reasons why he says he is still pursuing this case though not for any unification i mean that particular prayer he says he has deleted from his uh, petition is that there would be future guidelines as and when the further states are bifurcated or divided at a later stage but i don't think that's a very very important issue because no other state as and when a division happens there will have the same problem as that of andhra pradesh andhra pradesh is a peculiar state where in an area where the capital is located people wanted a division you take other places where there are these demands for separation like vidarbha north karnataka the capital is not there so as and when it happens if at all it happens they will not have the same problems as the division of andhra pradesh second point which you mentioned is bjp has a big plan of dividing the country into about 50 60 states and as and when it happens this can be a guidelines but trust assured in case bharatiya janata party is going to form that many number of states in the country there will definitely be a commission like the fasulali commission appointed in 50s by nehru and issues will be examined at a broad national level and some principles laid down and division start so this particular case or what happened here may not be a great may not give like that much of a guidance as and when those things happen but in any case he he wants to sincerely present to the people that the manner in which the division was done was not proper and to that extent maybe once the case goes through and the supreme court he has it will add something more about it but the response of mr sajjal ramkrishna reddy to this uh, was a little uh, peculiar he is telling that we will be interested in the united states in fact 2014 if at all there is one party which was in private wishing for an early division of the state it was ysrcp because they knew in telangana they had no uh, hold and if it if the if the elections were held in the united states they had no chance of coming to power but today in a very a uh, hypothetical situation to a hypothetical issue he gave an hypothetical answer stating that his party would be interested in the mm, united states which in any case is not going to happen which is not an issue at all even is not an issue with reference to the prayer that mr gundaval arun kumar has mm, made before the supreme court mr gundaval arun kumar incidentally was also mentioning the state government should fight for the promises made by the central government at the time of the division of the state and get the due 
whatever is due to this Andhra Pradesh state. It is this aspect I would like to dwell upon a little detail in this particular video. The division issues can be bifurcated into three. One, the issues which have a bearing between Andhra and Telangana. Two, the promises made by the uh, central government as part of the Bifurcation Act. Three, certain announcements made in the parliament and other places which are not part of the Bifurcation Act. Let us first take the uh, issues of bifurcation which are related to Andhra and Telangana state. The first most important thing is staff. The division of the staff is done very quickly uh, except the electricity utilities where the unions played a part. So, it got complicated. This of course finally landed up in the high court and then to the supreme court and then there was this Dharmadhikari commission which has been appointed and they have clearly laid down the principles of division of staff between Andhra and Telangana which is being followed now. So, to that extent that also is sorted out. So, the staff wise there is no issues that brings us to schedule 10 and schedule 9 institutions that is also bifurcated on that also there is no issue. So, that brings us to schedule 9 and schedule 10 institutions. Schedule 10 institutions are those institutions which are located exclusively in Hyderabad but which had a jurisdiction all over the state. Andhra's contention is they should also be divided on the basis of the population. Telangana's contention is they should be divided based upon location. Similarly, schedule 9 headquarters, the issue is only with headquarters not with the other things because other institutions, uh, uh, other um, portions of those institutions are already in geographically divided and started functioning. For example, APSRTC, the depots that are in Telangana have come to Telangana, depots that are in Andhra have come to Andhra and Andhra Pradesh uh, uh, Road Transport Corporation is separately functioning. Telangana Road Transport Corporation is separately functioning. The only issue that is pending division is the headquarters of the APSRTC located at Hyderabad, how it should be divided. The principles in the act are very clear, it should be divided based upon the population ratio. And for this, a committee has been constituted, Srila Bhede committee, they have given their recommendations, but Telangana refused to accept it. So, again, this has also landed up in the Supreme Court. And the value of these uh, Schedule 9 institutions are not 1 lakh 60,000 crores or something like that, which Mr. Vindaval Abhim Kumar mentioned. 1 lakh 60,000 crores is including the local unit value. Those are already divided and are there with the respective states. So, the headquarters as such may be around 25,000 crores, not more than that. And even that, the process of division is now stuck in the courts. And it is for the courts which have to finally give a verdict on both Schedule 9 as well as Schedule 10. The other one is, of course, the, 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 the um, uh, water resources. Water resources, there is a peculiarity in the sense, wherever, wherever you have a river, you have the problems of upper riparian and lower riparian because it comes from one state to the other. But here, you have the problem of side riparians because this river itself, in fact, is the boundary between both the states. So, that is why all those adverts on the Krishna river are taken over by the central government and the center is now administering them. And the water division is going to be the most complicated and long drawn out, maybe the tribunals and finally the Supreme Court will have to settle it. So, that leaves us the promises which have to be implemented as part of the AP Division Act. Schedule the educational institutions which were promised. All of them are already established and running. Running in fact quite early. There is a time of 10 years given for their uh, completion, but within 5 years they have already been made functional. So, that is one, one thing for which one has to give credit to the central government which none of us will give and, and keep on 
accusing them as if nothing has been done. So as far as the education institutions are concerned, all have been uh, established except the Petroleum University that again could not be established because the land has not been located and given over as required by the state government. Then the infrastructure institutions. As far as the infrastructure things are concerned, modernization of the airports has already been done as promised by the central government. Dugiraja Bhatnam port was promised by central government, but there was an environmental issue. They were willing to consider an alternative for it, but state government wanted to take up the construction of the Ramayapatnam port instead of look, uh, declaring it as a major port, they declared it as a minor port and taking it over. If they have declared it as a major port, definitely the whole funds would have come from government of India, but of course the management also would have been with government of India. Uh, this, this is something peculiar with the state government, both uh, Telugu Desam as well as uh, YSRCP. They want central funds, but they want local contracts. The Ramaya Patnam port, they want the government of India to give the funds, but the management, construction, everything, they want to do it. I think that is a very, very central government would accept for that. Similarly, Polavaram, which is what should have been implemented by government of India, state government took over and now you blame the center and you inflate the uh, uh, estimates and the rates. So this is something that is going on with the state government. So that, that, that leaves out the port issue. And then uh, Chennai, Vaisak Chennai industrial corridor is already operationalized and is functioning. So that is another thing which has been uh, implemented by government of India. That leaves us two major public sector institutions whose feasibility was to be examined as per the AP Bifurcation Act. One is the Kadapa steel plant and another is the crude oil refinery at Kakinad. Both on examination are found to be unviable. Second, as on date, central government as a matter of policy is not setting up any PSUs. Nowhere, nowhere in the country. So, these two PSUs will be set up separately when there is no specific uh, division bifurcation act mandate it may not really happen but hpcl refinery at vizac has been expanded with a huge investment even though this new greenfield one has not been uh, 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 taken up the best way of doing this would be Whatever is the investment that is going to come for the Kadapa steel plant or for crude oil refinery uh, uh, at Kakinada, quantify that, ask for funds, additional funds under different schemes of government of India in terms of infrastructure, roads, railways, smart cities, etc. Maybe that amount can come in that form. But for that, the state government should have a clear idea of giving a form and to these bifurcation issues. But both Telugu Desam as well as YSRCP politically feel keeping it alive without getting the funds will give them the advantage of making noise as and when required even though state may suffer because of which state is actually suffering today. If they have come with a concrete proposal of getting that much of investments in different fields for the state. As part of the existing central government schemes as an initial amount, maybe by now this issue would have been uh, sorted out without any problem. So this is as far as the infrastructure uh, uh, projects are concerned. As far as Polavaram is concerned, today the issue is technical. You are not, you have been neglected, not properly done it. You, you got stuck with the uh, uh, technical issues which need to be sorted out. <coughs> Funds as required have been given and central government is willing to give further funds, but then first the construction has to go off and for that the technical issues need to be uh, uh, sorted out. Then the resource gap for the year 2014-15 where a bloated amount uh, including all the freebies that the then government was trying to give was pushed into that and a huge amount of about 16,000 crores was asked from government of India. Government of India has committed itself to whatever is the actual additional expenditure because of division came to that about 4000 crores and has given it a little more is due and which they are willing to give it. 
as far as the backward area grant is concerned it is about 50 crores per district for those 7 districts both Rayal Sima is north and mm, Telangana spread over a period of I think 7 years which is coming to about 2100 crores. Out of the 1750 crores is given balance they are willing to give government of Andhra Pradesh is yet to submit the UC for the earlier amounts that they have taken. So that is where it stands. Always this is confused with a Bundelkhand package. When you talk of Bundelkhand package, what they have done in Bundelkhand package, they also gave the same amount 50-60 crores per each district for about 5 year period. Included other schemes that are being implemented in that particular um, district and called it a Bundelkhand package. You also include all those schemes which are coming, MNR, MNR, EGS and other schemes and include it, it also becomes equal to that or more than that. Without doing that, you exclude it here, include it there and then say, I should get about 20,000 crores. It is ridiculous. These are the type of uh, uh, jugglery that some of these uh, media people and some self-proclaimed intellectuals are doing and since it is to the advantage of the local regional parties, both the Telangana and uh, Telugu Desam as well as um, uh, YSRCP are happy to allow the issue to linger on without giving it a final full stop. So this, this is broadly the uh, issue about the division issues. They can be sorted out and a finality given and then um, progress uh, taken up as required uh, in the state. But both the regional parties find it advantageous to keep it pending and keep on getting it out as an issue as and when it politically suits them. But Government of India in addition to what has been promised in the Bifurcation Act has given a number of things to the state as part of its uh, regular uh, schemes. A lot of uh, funds are coming on national highways, railways, uh, smart cities and others and, and all of that is coming uh, based upon the need, based upon the requirement as part of a uh, all India agenda of development and growth. So I think people should realize the, 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 the issue of bifurcation and promises as is being played out by both these regional parties is not real but something they are doing to suit their political gains and for their own failures of bad governance, fiscal irresponsibility both TDP as well as YSRCP today wants to show BJP as the cause whereas the actual problems lie within the state of both the chief ministers who have let down a divided state with huge resource base with a great potential for growth. For more updates like, comment, Subscribe to our channel. Hey darlings, Gandhi click chedam much for Gandhi.